Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of The Arsenio Buck Show. I'm so grateful because today, after about six weeks, we're finally getting back into Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Today, we gotta figure out how much are you worth. See, in the movie Rich Dad, Poor Dad, okay... And you have Robert Kiyosaki, and he's talking to the man at the chair. I'm, I'm just going to consider him to be the rich dad. And he's trying to negotiate the salary. He said, listen, you're paying me too little. you got to give me more money. And so the guy's like, okay, uh, I'll give you a dollar an hour. And so remember, keep in mind, it's 1956. So the thing is, people, if you don't state your price, people will state it for you. Now, there was a time. Yes, that I just said, oh, well, as a matter of fact, it's in a podcast that's going to be coming up soon. The place that I work for, <clears throat> do they pay me what I'm worth? No. So I keep my, but the thing is, they do have my documents that, you know, allow me to stay in this country for longer. However, when it comes down to me paying for, you, you, you know, when it comes down to money and whatnot, I know what I'm worth. So I kind of keep it at a very minimal at this specific place. In other places, I get paid more. However, passive income is definitely something that I need to be focusing more on going into the new year because, honestly, working hour by hour is ridiculous, right? But let's keep in mind here. There was a student that got in contact with me. He is from Bangladesh, okay? And here in, he, uh, me and him were having a great conversation for 25 minutes. We're talking about a variety of different things. And I told him, hey, listen, you get one free hour of teaching after that if you want to buy one of the packages that are available because you're going to be taking TOEIC within three weeks. Let me know. He said, okay. But he never emailed me back. Once I told him about the pricing, he never emailed me back. Now, people, during these critical moments, you must understand you need to know what your self-worth is. Do not knock yourself down, especially on an international scale, because the moment you do that, that's when everyone says, oh, well, you know what? You're coaching. The, the services are very low. Why, why is it? Are you that good or this or that? There are lots of things that could go around. And remember, you're dealing with people on an international level. It's not just a national level. See, dealing with people here in Thailand, I could really give a damn. Why? Because I know what Thailand's always been and it doesn't really matter because Thailand is just one country. However, Bangladesh has almost almost one billion people and no, not all of them are poor. Now, if he's not able to pay the price that I actually stated, okay, by all means, at least message me back, you know, get, get in touch with me about the one hour free teaching and then we could go from there. But he never did. Now, am I going to be a pushy person and message him back? I could. I could. Lenita taught me this. Lenita, I bought onto my podcast a while back. She just said, hey, you know what? Do a follow-up and see how he's doing and this and that and this. But because I got sick, and as you can hear, my tonsillitis, I did not do that. I should have, but I didn't. So in saying that, what, I, what a lot of people do is that they would bring their price from being this high and reduce it down to 50% just to make a sale. See, that's you not having values or devaluing yourself. That's very critical, people. Because if you state your price, and then next thing you know, you half it up 50%. That means your overall price, you're not, you're, 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 you're not 100% behind of, what the, of the true value that you actually give. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is a critical component. Because guess what? When New Year's comes, my prices are going to go up like, twenty what, 20%. And they're going to continue climbing and climbing and climbing based on what happens throughout the year. So because he can't pay, I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's entirely up to you. I completely understand. But I'm not going to knock myself down. Because the moment I knock myself down, everyone else in the world could find out and realize, ooh, he's going to knock himself down. Yeah, he only charges this much. And guess what? They're going to be paying me the same wages that these fools out here have paid me for such a long time. That's not how it works. So, guys, what happened after this, going back into the Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad said, hey, how about $2 an hour? And Robert Kiyosaki, man, he almost blew up. He said, man, 1956, earning $2 an hour would have made him the richest kid in the world. 
right? And he thought about all the things he could have bought. He could have bought the, you know, baseball gloves and, you know, new bicycles and, you know, he could hang around people and they won't call him poor anymore. Can you believe that? He had a friend by the name of Jimmy. Jimmy's friends were rich. The rich friends would always call Robert poor because he didn't have enough money. This relates to my childhood friend. Okay, I don't really speak to him much anymore, but his name was Billy. Now, Billy, me and him comment probably once or twice a year, okay, on Facebook. But Billy, during the years 2000 and 2001, he would call me poor. So I remember uh, there, there were these, uh, what is it, the Maltesers. Uh, I think they call it malts, malt balls or something out there in Australia. Uh, in America, they call it Whoppers. It's a chocolate little, little cover candy, okay? And I remember one day, right after school, I went up to a guy, and Billy went up to a guy because he had these little Whoppers, right? And then when I was asking for some, Billy looked at me, and he said, oh, you're poor. As if he was the rich one, so he deserves to get first and me no and i'm like so i didn't know because again i wasn't a combative type i wasn't a very argumentative type i was a very innocent young individual at the age of 12 now if you call me poor now i'd be like "Mm, oh oh," completely different but if you call me poor like if i was in a high school then it could have been a battle because then i actually developed hey who the fuck are you calling poor are you serious but guess who ended up being poor billy so what do you what do I mean by that? Well, Billy's house got repossessed. Billy ended up getting kicked out of his house, right? So he got evicted and he disappeared for a couple of years. Come to find out that that house was all built off drug money. That's right. Unfortunately, Billy at that time his father was running a meth business and that's how they had so much money. And so To actually uncover and unveil all that, we did that in a discussion in 2010 when he ended up reconnected with me. And so when we had this discussion in 2010, he's like, yeah, well, you know what? My home and everything I had was because my father had a meth lab. And I was like, holy fuck. And you were the one calling me poor, but you were the poorest of them all. Kind of weird, huh? No, never took it offense. Never took it offensive. But we actually had a laugh because I'm like, damn, remember when you used to call me poor for no apparent reason? Because I remember you donated two couches to my mom because we didn't have furniture in our new town home. Yeah, but the thing is, Billy, you were only nine years old at the time. You have no right to call anyone poor. And of course, kids being kids and whatnot, just understand people. If you're one of these people or you know one of these people who are trying to fit into a group because, hey, you know what, because I got money now, I can hang out with these kids, fuck that, okay? Do not hang around people based on finan- uh, uh, based on financial status. So I'm going la- to give you one last example before I get into this even more. Would I ever, if you said Arsenio, let's just say you made a lot of money, would you end up going to very expensive clubs and... Very expensive restaurants and do this and do that. Absolutely not. Because I know those dogs in those places, they have no sympathy, no empathy, no self-compassion, no nothing for anyone else. All they do is care about them and their social status. That's all they care about. Why would I want to be around those people? So always keep that in mind. If you start making money, don't say, ooh, now I could go hang out with these people. Because if you do and you're trying to fit in with others, you have lost that life. Fit in with yourself. Got it? So... What was even more interesting was after the $2 an hour, Rich Dad said, hey, how about $5 an hour? And then all of a sudden, Robert was silent. He said something changed. He said that offer was too much. The temptation disappeared. He turned left, looked at his friend. His friend looked back at him. A part of his soul was weak and that needy was silenced. And you know what? The part of him that had no price took over. So then Rich Dad said, good. And he said, quote, most people have a price and they have a price because of human emotions named fear and greed. First, the fear of being without money motivates us to work hard. And then once we get that paycheck, greed or desire starts us to think or starts us thinking about all the wonderful things money can buy. The pattern is then set. 
And of course, Robert Kiyosaki, he said, well, what's the pattern? He said, that's correct. Instead of admitting the truth about how they feel, they react to their feelings and fail to think. They feel the fear, so they go to work. Hoping that money will soothe their fear. But it doesn't continue. Well, I actually, but it doesn't. It continues to haunt them. And they return to work, hoping again that money will calm their fears. And again, it doesn't. Fear keeps them in this trap of working. Earning money, working, earning money, hoping the fear will somehow go away. But every day they get up. And that old fear wakes up with them. For millions of people, that old fear keeps them awake all night. Cause it a night of turmoil and worry. So they get up and go to work. Hoping that a paycheck will kill that fear gnawing at their soul. Money is running their lives. And they refuse to tell the truth about that. Money is in control of their emotions and their souls. Are you one of those people? That's what I want to top this off with. Are you one of those people? Because that has happened to me over probably the past couple of weeks. Because I told myself December, you know, January, February are possible down times and whatnot. Uh, how am I going to be able to sustain a wage and sustain this, you know, throughout these blah, 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 blah. And so, yeah, over the past couple of months, I've been saying, you know what? What the hell, man? I don't know what I should do. But then I said, you know what, Arsenio? But you're doing pretty good. Because if we even go back to the guy from Bangladesh, not only that, you have three other online students that you picked up just out of your hustle. One came back. She was a returning but then, two, you said, hey, you know what? Do you want to learn online? He's like, yeah. And he said, okay, deal. And I said, hey, doesn't the other lady want to learn online? He said, yeah, let me hear. Here you go. Here's her contact. I contacted her. She's like, yeah, I want to learn one by one. I said, hey, I'll give you a free class so we can test it out. She said, okay. I said, book the calendar. She booked the calendar. I created my own economy. But does that still make me comfortable with my salary and with my well-being and everything I have? Because if it doesn't. And I'm still in that same perpetual year after year after year floating around the same dynamics and the same salaries and the same overall savings that I've been having. Something has to change. So, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. Stay tuned for another Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'm your host, as always, over and out.